to be able to take away this information. <laughs> 14 syllables sum up European studies and teaching European studies to students. Here's a few I came up with. Two ends in Monet, Schumann one, Nalin de Gasperi. <laughs> or how about, one of the councils is not a council you need to know. <laughs> Democracy packs its bags. Sorry, democracy packs its bags each month. Eats Strasbourg shoe fruit. <laughs> or we must all factor in the impact of impact factors. <laughs> but if I were to add European studies to that list, of course, that makes 15 subjects. So the constraint would be 15 syllables. How could we sum up contemporary European politics in 15 syllables? Well, for those of you who research the media, the public sphere and still watch the BBC. I think you'll probably know that the BBC has taught us a lot recently about European politics. So I've got three here. Angela Merkel is played by an English comic actress. Nicola Sturgeon is played by an English comic actress. Jeremy Corbyn is played by an English comic actress. That's for all of you who've been watching the Tracy Orman. My grandfather was a real Francophile. And he introduced me to, to France and so also to life's disappointments. <laughs> Eight years old, as the ferry approached the Epp, seeing the beach wasn't sand but pebbles. <laughs> Ten years later, post A levels, and I guess like many of you in the room, it was interrailing. Experienced firsthand the national permutations of McDonald's. <laughs> A real adventure before mobile phones, before low cost airlines before the Euro. Capacity. 70 litres. In theory, more than plenty for three t-shirts, two shorts, a pair of jeans you're wearing. Then the question of the tent. Saucepan, small canister of gas, map and Bible of Thomas Cook timetables. Every single train possibility from here to Ankara. One crisp 50,000 euro note. <laughs> a handful of Swiss francs and a wad of American Express traveler's checks. Foreign currency kept flat zipped inside a canvas wallet with velcro strap wrapped <laughs> tight around the waist. Typical Monday. Your father at work, your mother out somewhere. You lift here soon. <laughs> I then went, obviously like many of you, after A-levels on to university, but I actually first went to, as a language assistant to Avignon began my own kind of sentimental education, quickly asked the impossible to explain English grammar. <laughs> and over Café au lait, when not in a language lab, I struggled a little bit to read some Flaubert and Balzac. old apples in the drawer of his desk, that he spoke Occitan fluently and knew the odd word of Basque stocked Indian ink in an old thermos flask. <laughs> they liked to say he decanted his wine into a whiskey cured cask, that he insisted on souffle to accompany his oyster bisque and well fed would slump in the sun like a seal to bask. The story went. He had a husky-voiced lover called Saskia, holed up in Minsk, that she'd married into money and was Polish from Dansk, and the frisky rascal stole her from Ruskin one rosy sky at dusk. You'd often hear he liked to dance ballet, practice the plie and arabesque, but heavy, couldn't flex his calves with vascular tension, was unfit for the task, that far from brisk he toppled mid-pirouette and slipped to disc. People said he was a brusque, Gascon stock and treated good friends askance that he denounced Catholicism to join the Episcopalians, weighed down his novels in progress with a mammoth's tusk. Some still insist. 
He wore a mud pack to bed and a black silk eye mask, but he doused himself in the most pungent musk, and his body lies on display in a Paris mosque behind plexiglass. <laughs> you might have wondered if all of that was true.